Today's video is about finishing off tapestries. Hello lovely friends, thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is another tapestry tips video. If you're not into tapestry tips, don't worry, there'll be a studio vlog next fortnight. But um, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, I would really love if you could subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you like it. And also so that more people on YouTube are able to see it. Now I wanted to do this video because finishing off tapestries is one of the most mysterious parts of tapestry weaving. <laughs> When I learned tapestry weaving in my diploma, there were quite a few methods that you could use for finishing off tapestries, especially the hanging part of tapestries. And even though I've been doing tapestry weaving for about 10 years now, it's only been in the last, I'd say 12 to 18 months that I've really figured out a really good way of hanging tapestries. Now, I'm not sure why this is such a secretive thing in the tapestry community. And when I was trying to figure out how to do it, the only thing that I could find was that people were screwing battens into the wall and then hanging their tapestry on. But I don't know about you, I don't really want to rely on places letting me screw battens into the wall. I need a solution where you can literally just hang a tapestry up on the wall as if it's any other painting, drawing, whatever. You want it to be as easy as possible so that number one, you can move them around yourself in your room, which I do all the time. And number two, when you're selling a tapestry, you are not scaring the hell out of your customers because they're wondering how on earth do I hang this thing? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I finish off the tapestry and then how I make the batten that goes across the top in order to hang it. So stay tuned. One of the questions I get asked the most is, do I sew in all the ends on the back? And the answer to that question is no, definitely not. It would take you forever. I mean, it takes forever to finish a tapestry anyway. So why would you add even more time? Now with tapestry weaving, if you do traditional tapestry weaving, so that means you beat down the weft so that you can't see any of the warp, then the ends on the back are very secure and they're not going anywhere. They are stable and secure. So what you want to do is cut the ends on the back to about a couple of centimeters or about an inch, and you're only going to sew in the ones on the edges. I'll show you what I mean. This is the back of one of my tapestries. And you can see that the back is quite shaggy. I've left the ends here, but from about here to here, that's when I've left the ends at about a couple of centimeters long. But on the very edges, I have actually sewn the ends in, which you can't really see because, well, they're sewn in. <laughs> but the reason I've done that is because if you leave the edges here, they will stick out and you will be able to see them from the front of the tapestry. So that's the main reason why we tend to sew in the ends just on the edges, but the rest can just be left because they're completely fine. They're going nowhere. If you're using a bit of tricky yarn, like metallic threads, I've got some here, just make sure that you put a knot in the end because this stuff does fray. But with, if you're using just traditional wool, cotton, linen, they will be completely fine, just left as is. Now I've done a video previously about making a hem for tapestry. So what I tend to do first is I just take out the line of waste yarn that was part of the hem. Then I fold the hem over. I actually finish this off with the overlocker and then I just stitch it onto the back. So that's the, anything that you can see is red, that's the hem. The next thing that I do is I get a piece of fabric and I just put all the information for that tapestry on the back and I sew it on. That's just in case the batten goes missing, you've always got the information about the artwork. Up the top of the tapestry, let me just get the top. The same thing has happened. I flipped over that hem and then I've sewn a piece of Velcro. So this is the fuzzy side of the Velcro that I've put along the top of the tapestry. Now, if you want to know how I do those hems, then please refer back to this video. There'll be a link 
up the top but you can go and check that out next the batten which I'm going to show you how I make is just a piece of wood and on the other side is the other side of the velcro so when I'm hanging the tapestry I'm literally just going to stick that onto the velcro and that's it just like that and so you shouldn't be able to see too much of the hanging system when it's on the uh, right hand side I've dipped it down enough so that the top of the tapestry hides that a little bit the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make the batten that goes on the back of the tapestry now this was a long and painful process as I mentioned in the beginning of the video to figure out how on earth to do this and what I ended up doing was uh, first I actually had a picture framer make one for me with D-rings and I just found that the tapestry kept falling forward just at the top so that wasn't the best option for me so I put a call out on Instagram to my tapestry friends and just said how do you do it and to be honest I didn't really get many replies as I said people are quite reluctant to share their secrets I don't know why I mean that's why I've had this channel I just want to share everything with you but um, a really lovely tapestry weaver Natalie Novak if you're watching thank you so much and I'll leave her website down below she gave me this great idea for putting screw rings at the top of the batten and that holds the tapestry pretty straight on the wall when it's hanging so I'm going to show you how I make those right now so when it comes to actually making up the batten I will show you what I usually do so here's the batten before we've done anything with it uh, I just did the one coat of stain you can do two if you like but I found that one is fine and then I attached the rough side of the velcro onto the batten just with this rather dangerous looking <laughs> staple gun so I did that then I grabbed a couple of these hopefully this can get in focus should do this shouldn't I there you go come on camera then what I've done is I've got a couple of these eye rings as you can see and I have put them in the middle of the batten up the top I've spaced them out about five centimeters and then I put a piece of picture wire in between and this is a technique that I got from Natalie Novak so thank you so much Natalie for giving me this idea before I was using D rings and the tapestry would always sort of fall forward but doing it this way you can sometimes see the top of this at the very top of the tapestry but if you try and put it onto the top of the tapestry with a little bit of space then the tapestry just hangs beautifully and I'll show you what I mean by that Thank you so much for watching this video I hope you found it valuable if there's any other ways that you like to hang your tapestries I would love if you could let me know in the comments even though I've got my favorite way of doing it you know what you can always learn something new and if you're always learning new things and we're always sharing new things then that's only a good thing for the tapestry community surely <laughs> let me know in the comments and until the next video Bye.